Welcome everyone to Environmental Economics or Econ 143 Section 1. This is just going to be a short video that serves as an introduction to the class. Now normally this class would meet every Monday and Wednesday from 12.30 p.m. to 1.50 p.m. But in response to the coronavirus outbreak, this class will now be online. So uh, it will consist mostly of uh, pre-recorded lectures, meaning that this class meets whenever you want it to. So whenever you want to listen to the lectures, uh, that's when this class meets. It's completely up to you. Uh, this class will be taking place online through both iLearn and Zoom. I'm going to be your host on your environmental economic journey. My name is Joab Corey. You can just call me Joab is fine. Please don't call me Mr. Corey. That makes me feel really old. And please don't worry about calling me Dr. Corey or Professor Corey. That kind of makes me feel like a nerd. So you just call me by my first name. Joab is fine. Uh, my office is 3107 Sprout Hall, although currently we are not allowed in there because we are practicing the social distancing. So you won't be able to find me there, at least not until after May or maybe not even until after then, depending on how things go. Uh, my office phone is 951-827-1570. But again, if you call that number, you won't find anybody because we are not allowed in our offices until at least May 1st. Uh, so with that in mind, I am providing my cell phone number, which is 304-545-8780. So you're welcome to call me at that number if you like. Um, the only thing I ask is that please don't text me at that number. If you want to write out a written message, email me instead at joab.corey at ucr.edu, simply because I am faster at typing than I am at texting. Kind of old, so I don't text very quickly. Uh, type much faster. So if you want a written reply to your message, again, email me is the better way to go. Uh, we will be holding office hours. Of course, they won't be in my office, but they will be through Zoom. And those are going to be every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. Or I'm also available pretty much uh, on any day by appointment. So if those times don't work for you, but you need to speak to me for whatever reason, and you want to schedule a Zoom meeting, then we can make that happen as well. Uh, some stuff about me. So I was born and raised in West Virginia, and I went to West Virginia University where I got my bachelor's, master's, and PhD in economics. Go Mountaineers. Uh, I graduated from West Virginia University in 2009, and then was hired by Florida State University in Tallahassee, Florida, where I taught economics for seven years. So I love growing up in West Virginia. It's called the Mountain State because there's a lot of mountains around, and I really do love hiking uh, in the mountains and climbing and things like that. So I was really happy to grow up there in West Virginia, and I really like teaching at Florida State University. The only thing about Florida is there's no mountains, right? So I was kind of disappointed with that, and after a few years, I was looking to move. Fortunately, in 2016, UC Riverside had a job opening. They're like, hey, Joel, come teach out here. Uh, we have mountains. In fact, we're actually called the Highlanders. And I was like, you know what? I love mountains. I love the movie Highlander. Let's hook this up. All right, so I've been teaching out here at UC Riverside ever since. This is my fourth year and my first time teaching online. Uh, with that in mind, uh, here are some textbooks and uh, materials that you're going to need for this class. First of all, this textbook is just optional. Uh, this is the textbook that we're going to be following most closely, but all the assignments are going to be posted up there on iLearn. And anything on the exams are going to come from uh, my lecture uh, materials. So again, you won't necessarily need this book. But if you're looking for an additional reference tool, the book we're using is called Environmental Economics, an Introduction, the 7th uh, edition by Mary and Martha Field. Now, this is going to be supplemented by information from other texts, as well as readings that will be posted on iLearn, right? So again, most of the information that we're going to be using for this class will be posted on iLearn there for you, so you won't need that book. Uh, so again, if you're taking this class and you're really interested in it, you might want to think about getting the book. Uh, but again, you, you won't need it to do well in this class. I recommend going through a few weeks and seeing how things are going before I'd even investigate purchasing that textbook. As far as uh, communication is concerned, I will be emailing you all pretty free, uh, frequently to keep you updated regarding grades and assignments. So please check your UCR email accounts frequently. And then you can check your grades and look at old assignments and things like that on our uh, iLearn Blackboard course site. I have them posted there for you all quarter. I'm required to go over course objectives with you, so here they are. First of which, I'm going to make you familiar with the issues of environmental economics and how economists traditionally approach environmental policy debates, which might be different than how you're used to approaching environmental policy debates, particularly if you don't have a strong economics background. So we're going to be taking the economic approach to study the environment, which means that we're going to treat the uh, uh, environmental debates as a matter of competing preferences, where neither side is, or neither side 
is uh, morally superior to the other, but just of uh, an idea of cost versus benefits. Um, with that in mind, we're going to help you become more fluent in using economic theory to discuss both environmental and natural resource issues. Uh, hopefully, we're going to help you teach, you teach you to identify the benefits and costs of environmental policies and then learn about the profession of environmental economics and environmental studies in general so that you can make an informed decision as if you were to pursue uh, environmental science as a career. So a lot of times people take these upper division economic electives without uh, really knowing why. They're usually just trying to fill some kind of uh, requirement to graduate. Uh, sometimes they're interested in the subject. And then sometimes people actually want to pursue uh, this particular field. So with that in mind, uh, part of the assignment for, assignments for this course are going to involve you exploring the field to see if you want to work in it uh, and maybe even study in grad school uh, environmental science in some kind of way. And then our final objective here is to develop your writing and critical thinking skills, right? Every week there's going to be some uh, writing involved with what I call our weekly thought provoking assignment. And then there's also going to be a paper that is due as part of this course as well. With that in mind, uh, some brief uh, classroom etiquette stuff. Uh, again, this class will be taken completely online in response to the COVID-19 outbreak. And therefore, the, you succeed in this class will depend on your ability to be largely self-sufficient in completing these weekly modules and assignments on time. So again, we're never going to really be meeting as a class. I'll have office hours every week if you need to ask me questions. But the class lectures will consist of pre-recorded uh, videos that you can listen to anytime you want on your own time. So it's kind of up to you to make sure you're listening to those every week and then completing that uh, weekly assignment that we're going to be talking about here shortly. Uh, when you do uh, decide to uh, uh, come to the Zoom office hours, please come prepared with questions that you'd like me to answer. If you come in and someone is already asking a question, please mute your microphone so that we can limit the background noise and then wait for your turn to ask a question. These Zoom office hours are not required, but they will be available if you uh, have any questions that you'd like to ask. Uh, every week I'll be kind of sending you out a link for the next uh, uh, Zoom office hour session. Just click on that link when you want to come in and enter that session. And again, come in with questions uh, prepared to ask, and I'll be happy to answer them to the best of my ability. Uh, also, please always be respectful with, of your uh, fellow classmates when you interact with them uh, during uh, office hours, a review session, or any kind of discussion that you might engage with with those classmates. We don't have any formal discussion sessions for this particular class, but we will have review sessions and office hours, in which case, uh, please, again, make sure that you are respectful of your uh, fellow classmates. Uh, here's the general grading scale for this particular course. Um, a is 89.5 to 100, a B is a 79.5 to an 89.49, right, and so forth and so on down. So I give you that kind of 0. 0.5 to uh, round up there in terms of getting that letter grade, but that's about it. That's a pretty hard grading scale other than that. I do give pluses or minuses if you are in the top one and a half or bottom one and a half percent of the grade range listed here. Uh, with that in mind, here's what that more specific grading scale looks like. Right, so again, if you have 98.5% uh, or better, or over 394 points, you'll have an A+. Plus, right, if you have 89.5 to about 90.99%, uh, or that bottom 1.5% range, you'll have a minus, an A-, minus, and then that uh, range in between is where you'll have the letter grade itself, the A. Right, and that's pretty much the case for um, all these grades here. So the scale is the exact number of points you need as well as the exact percentage you need to get the grade that you want in the class, right? So if you want, uh, say, an A minus, then you need at least 358 points. If you have 357.98 points, that is a B plus, not an A minus. I do not round up grades beyond the 0.5 that I've already told you about, right? So again, wherever you follow this grading scale, that's what grades you're going to get at the end of the quarter. Please don't ask me to bump up or boost your grade at all at the end of the quarter because that will happen. The only way to truly be fair is to keep the same scale for all students. With that in mind, here's where your grades are going to come from. So we're going to have what we call these weekly thought-provoking assignments. Uh, that's going to be about 40 points or 10% of your grade. There is an environmental economics paper that's going to be worth 60 points or 15% of your grade. There's going to be two homework assignments worth 50 points each, which uh, together will be 25% of your grade. This will be one 100-point midterm and then one 100-point final. Again, each of those are 25% of your grade. So if you add up all those points, that adds, adds up to 400 points. Uh, every point counts the same, so every four points counts as 1%. 
As far as these weekly thought-provoking assignments are concerned, at the end of every week, there will be a short five-point weekly assignment that you must submit by 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Friday of that week. So no matter what time zone you're in, you must have this assignment uh, completed and submitted by 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on uh, Friday. So uh, there will be a total of 10 of these assignments this quarter. The highest eight will count towards your 40-point total. This means that you can do poorly on or miss completely two of these weekly assignments without affecting your grade. Uh, for this reason, there are no makeups should you fail to complete an assignment for any reason. So if you forget about assignment or if your internet connection breaks and you can't complete it on time, please don't ask me for a makeup because remember you are allowed to miss two before they count against you. As far as the paper is concerned, there is one paper worth 60 points, which you will be uh, submitting through iLearn. Uh, the paper will consist of three parts. Part one is up to you. It's a choice. Uh, you can either uh, examine an environmental issue, which involves you doing some research on an environmental issue that uh, uh, interests you, or you can complete the gauging your environmental impact section of the paper, which is you taking a look at your life for about two weeks and see how much you impact the environment. This involves keeping track of... Uh, how much gas you use while driving, or uh, how much meat you eat. Uh, you're gonna learn why that's gonna impact the environment during chapter one, right? Uh, you're also gonna be looking at how much trash you throw away, how much energy or electricity you use. So you'll be kind of keeping track of your life and gauging your environmental impact for a uh, two week period. Uh, everybody's gonna do part two, which is you researching a graduate program in environmental sciences that you think might interest you. And then everyone's going to do part uh, three, which is researching a potential career in environmental science that you think might interest you. All right. So uh, the explicit instructions for writing this paper are located uh, both in your syllabus and up there on iLearn under assignments. There is a folder labeled environmental economics paper. You can find those instructions there as well. Uh, the first part of the assignment, whichever part you choose, uh, is going to be two to three pages. Part two should be about one page. Part three should be about one page. So all in all, you're looking at about a four to five page paper that's going to be due on, uh, by 5 p.m. Again, Pacific Standard Time on Wednesday, May 20th. So again, these instructions for writing your paper are located in your syllabus and on iLearn. Feel free to ask me any questions that you may have about the paper. You can uh, log into those office hours and ask me there, or you can shoot me an email. If you want to uh, discuss your uh, paper topic with me, if you decide to do uh, examine the environmental issue for part one, I'll be more than happy to uh, talk it over with you. There will be two homework assignments. Uh, uh, each is going to be worth 50 points. The homework assignments will be uh, involve answering short answer and essay questions. That'll be kind of similar to the questions you should see on your exam. Uh, all homework assignments must be submitted through iLearn and will be turned in by 5 p.m. again Pacific Standard Time. On the, way, on the day in which they are due. And those days include uh, Wednesday, April 29th for homework one, and then Wednesday, June 3rd for homework number two. Again, there will be uh, two exams, a midterm and a final. Each will be worth a, a hundred points. A higher grade on the final will replace a lower grade on the midterm exam. So if you do really poorly on a midterm, let's say you get like a 60 on the midterm, and then you get say a 90 on the final, that 90 on the final will turn that 60 you got on the midterm into a 90. And that works that way if you miss the midterm completely as well. So if for whatever reason you miss the midterm exam, then again, wherever you get on the final will also count for your midterm exam grade, right? So the weight of the midterm will shift to the final, making that final exam worth 200 points to you if you were to miss it for any reason. Uh, these exams will be completed on iLearn, and these are the only things that have to be completed during your regular class uh, days and times. Right, so your midterm exam will be on Wednesday, May 6th during your regular class time from 12.30 p.m. to 1.50 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Your final exam is on Monday, June 8th from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time, which is the normal final exam time for this class. So those are the only things that you need to complete at, uh, during the actual class uh, days and times. The rest of it will be on your own to complete at your leisure as long as, again, you submit the assignments before they are due. Uh, if you do have an accommodation registered through the uh, Student Disability Resource Center and I, did, and, I get, and I got your accommodation letter and you needed, say, extra time for the exams, don't worry, that can be arranged through iLearn. Uh, there will be the potential for some extra credit points, including uh, one here during uh, what I call Module Zero, where we're going through these introductory slides. 
Uh, so, and the extra credit uh, counts just the same as any other points. So you can earn up to 12 extra credit points through completing these kinds of online surveys and other potential assignments. And at the end of the quarter, all your extra credit points that you earn will just be added to your total number of points out of 400. So again, every point counts the same, whether it comes from a homework, uh, an exam, your paper, or extra credit. Uh, now, please note that you cannot earn more than 12 extra credit points, no matter how much extra credit you choose to do. So if you try to do, say, 15 total extra credit points worth of work, at the end of the quarter, you'll get 12. That is the cap or the limit, right? So again, that's kind of uh, where your grades are going to come from. Here's a quick example on how to calculate your grade, right? So uh, when it comes to these weekly thought-provoking assignments, let's say the typical student here got, say, 36 out of 40. On homework one, they got 38 out of 50. On homework two, they got 46 out of 50. On the environmental economics paper, they got 52 out of 60. Then they got 54 out of 100 on exam, uh, the midterm exam, and they got 90 out of 100 on the final. So again, I told you that every point counts the same. So you just add up your points here. So that's 316 points divided by 400, which comes out to a 79% if you were paying attention to that grading scale earlier, is a C plus, All right? So you just add up your points and you divide it by the points possible. Now there's one thing that you might have noticed, I didn't forget, but just to emphasize this, please remember that a higher grade on your final exam does replace a midterm exam grade that is lower. So notice that the student got a 54 on the midterm exam and then a 90 on the final. So everybody watching that midterm exam score, it's no longer a 54, and now becomes a 90. So that's gonna add 36 points to this student's grade, giving them a total of 352 points for the quarter. So we take that 352, and we divide it by the 400 points possible, and that comes out to an 88%, which again, according to our grading scale, is a B plus. Now, it should be noted that if the final exam grade happens to be lower than your midterm exam grade, it's not going to drop that midterm exam grade down, right? But a final exam grade that is higher than your midterm exam grade will cause your midterm exam grade to go up. And the reason why I do that is because your final is cumulative. It covers it all. And so if you do well in the final, it shows me that you learned that information that you did not know at the time that you took that midterm exam. So I think it's only fair that it should be able to raise your grade. Now, there is something else that we talked about, and that is extra credit points. Let's say the student earned a total of eight extra credit points this quarter. Then again, we just add those points on to the total number of points uh, that you uh, uh, have uh, for the uh, quarter because extra credit points count the same as other points. So 352 plus eight is going to give us a total of 360 points for the quarter. So now we just take that 360, you divide it by 400, and that's going to come out to a 90% which according to our grading scale is an A minus, right? So again, you have plenty of opportunities to do, to do well in this class, right? But again, it's not just going to uh, happen for you. You got to make it happen. Make sure you do well on that final exam, which replaces the uh, midterm exam grade if you didn't do so well on that. And if there are extra credit opportunities available, please make sure you take advantage of them. Speaking of extra credit opportunities, uh, when you're done watching this video and if you've read the syllabus, there is what I call a uh, online class rules and academic honesty survey, right? That's just a short set of questions to make sure you, one, understand the rules of the class, and two, you know what cheating is and that you're not going to do it. If you uh, fill out that survey and submit it by 5 p.m. on Thursday of the first week, uh, again, Pacific Standard Time, then you will get one extra credit point for completing that survey and turning it in, right? So that'll be your first opportunity to turn extra credit is when you complete module zero this week your last step in that module is to complete that uh, uh, online uh, class rules and academic honesty survey. And so that's it. Uh, make sure you read the syllabus if you haven't read it already. Uh, and again, now you have the uh, opportunity to complete that survey for one extra credit point as long as you complete it and submit it uh, no later than 5 p.m. on Thursday of this uh, first week. And with that in mind, after you finish uh, completing that survey and reading that syllabus, completing what I call the Module Zero activities, then you can get started on Module One by watching the uh, lecture videos for Chapter One. There is one reading for this week that I'd like you to do, and then complete your weekly thought-provoking assignment for Week One. 
and that is due by 5 p.m. on Friday of this first week. So uh, if you have any questions about the course, please feel free to email me or ask me during those Zoom office hours. I uh, look forward to an exciting spring quarter. I know it's a little unusual to uh, have this class taught online. Uh, I'm getting used to it just like you are. But it's definitely a good thing that it is being taught online because I've actually come down with the flu. It's still uh, undetermined whether or not it is the coronavirus yet. But uh, I am uh, sick teaching these uh, first weeks of lecture. So with that in mind, it's probably a good thing that I'm not in front of you right now. But we will get, uh, again have all these lectures pre-recorded and posted for you on iLearn so that you can uh, keep watching them at your leisure and completing the assignments uh, at your own pace. Again, just let me know if you have any questions. I look forward to working with you this quarter. Make sure you are staying safe and healthy and take care.